These videos are offered on a pay-what-you-like basis. You can pay for the use of the videos at my website. There's a link to my website in the info box. The address is www.freelance-teacher.com slash videos dot htm. Or you can just use the link in the info box. Thank you. All right, well, well, first of all, let's just make sure that we understand the basic ideas. Here's the type of problem you're likely to see on the exam. Let's say that we have a, a helium, a positively charged helium uh, ion. And let's say that an electron goes from the n equals 4 energy level to n equals 2. And the question is how to find the wavelength of the photon. So let's just sketch out how we would do this to make sure we understand the basic idea. So how would we go about solving this? Well, you know it's going to be negative, right? Just like in general. What, what will be negative? Is it going to be negative because it's an who, who, who do you mean by it? Sorry, the, uh, the wavelength. Or the, the... Oh, never mind. Um, I don't know if that. You would, you would use the Radenberg equation, but you would use the... Um, you would... You would use the um, Hertz value for R so that you could end up with frequency, and then you would use C equals lambda nu and solve. That sounds like those are good steps. What would we have to do first here? Find the energy. Yeah, and how would we do that? The Radenberg equation. Yeah, so which equation is that? Um, negative R infinity times 1 over N final squared minus 1 over N initial. Okay, yeah, let's talk about that. That won't quite work in this case. Oh, so let's sketch that out a little bit more. Yeah, this is the type of question you're likely to see on the exam. This is a very basic type of idea. So we know that there's only certain possible quantum number, uh, energy levels that are available inside the atom. N equals 1, N equals 2, N equals 3, N equals 4 n equals 5, etc. And here we have the electron that's going from n equals 4 to n equals 2. Now, first of all, does that mean that a photon will be emitted or absorbed? Emit emitted. Because it's going to be losing energy, and the photon has to take that energy away. So the first thing that we have to do um, is, uh, so you, you were trying to use an equation that tells you directly the energy change between these two points. But that equation actually only works for, um, for um, hydrogens. It doesn't work for uh, atoms that have more electrons in them. Although I guess we can I mean, kind of yeah, improve I think it. The only reason we learn that is because we're only doing one. Uh, oh, the Reimer equation is only for hydrogen? It's only for one electron atoms. Yeah. Um, oh. And there are problems in that sample exam that deal with uh, atoms that have more. We can actually fix this so it, it'll work with other things. But here's the basic equation. How do you find the energy of each of these levels? You might be asked that too. How can we figure out what the energy is of one of these levels? Minus d squared over n squared times r infinity. Like this? Yeah. Yeah. This is the basic equation for finding the energies um, at these levels. And this is a constant that you can look up. Right. And now, there's the two values for it. Well, one didn't and one didn't. Yeah. Okay. That's right. So um, here's our basic equation. Now, this only works for one electron atoms and ions. One electron atoms and ions. That means it works for hydrogen, or it works with helium, where one of the electrons has been stripped away, or lithium, where two of the electrons have been um, stripped away. Okay. Um, what would we do after we figured out the energy of these two levels? We would then subtract that, right, to figure out how much energy we're losing and going from here to here. OK. Now, in your cheat sheet there, you actually have a shortcut formula, which says that the energy is equal to, or the frequency. Yeah, depending on which Rydberg right. equation that you use. Um, so it's equal to, uh, let's see, negative r times, yeah, times 1 over n final but, squared. I mean, I guess they both work. I just get confused that final and initial, like this? so I just like to figure out which one, if it's going to be negative or not, and then just subtract and not worry about Yeah, it. energies and frequencies have to be positive. So you don't really have, even have to worry about the signs here so much. You just do a subtraction, and if things come out negative, you just drop the sign. 
because well, we know that energies and frequen frequencies have to be, I'm sorry, but if it's uh, I'm, I'm sorry, I, I guess I'm not saying that right. The change in energy here is what we're trying to figure out. I'd be, what, the way I put that uh, wasn't so good. Wouldn't the change in energy be negative if you were emitting um, Yeah, although um, oftentimes when people talk about the change in energy, you just say there's like five joules emitted. You wouldn't say negative five joules emitted. So when, you, when you're actually working with the other equations, it turns out you're usually going to work with delta E as positive. But let's use the version of the equation in, in your, in, in your uh, cheat sheet. So this says, well, I'll just look it up here. So. This is the one from the exam. Yeah, well, just like you have that cheat sheet, there's the same cheat sheet in the sample exam. Okay. So, or is there? It should be the first page, or the second page. Where does that sample come from? Online. Is that an old one or is that one that's Oh, actually, yeah. In the sample exam, they didn't give this formula. They only gave this formula. Oh, really? This formula actually gives you more intuition. Yeah. But anyway, um, here's the key thing. This, uh, this equation, so let's say that you're working with hydrogen. What, what, do you know what the Z means here? What does Z stand for? Yeah. yeah. So for hydrogen, what would Z be? One. Yeah. And for helium, what would Z be? And for lithium, Z would be three. Right. So this allows us to work with any atom as long as it's got one electron. But this has been this is assuming that Z is one. Do you notice how the Z has dropped out down oh, here? Right. That's why I said this wouldn't work in this case. Uh, notice that this is just what you get when you take this and you subtract the two terms. Okay. Right? But if I want to generalize this, I would just have to put in a Z squared term. And now I could use this in any case. So if you took this and you subtracted the two energies, you would get this. So if you want to. I think you get more intuition if you actually figure out the levels first, and then you plug into here. But if you want to have one equation that just tells you the delta E, it needs to have a z squared term in it. Uh, in this sample exam, they only gave this formula, so maybe this is a little bit better to work okay. with. Okay. So now um, we could plug. So in this case, what would we plug in for z? In for this example. Uh, two. Yeah, we would plug in two, uh, and we'd look up the Rydberg. Uh, Formula and what would we plug in for n final and n initial? The final is two, the initial is four. Yeah, I guess you could plug in two and uh, four there, um, and then that would give us the delta e. Right. And I guess the simplest thing is um, you could use the the Rydberg um, that's in terms of frequency, right? Um, and sorry, sorry. So even though you, you're using this for a two proton atom, um, you still only have one electron. Otherwise, it wouldn't work. That's right. So remember that um, if you had neutral helium, neutral helium would have two electrons and two protons. Right. Um, however, it's possible for helium to have only one electron if we just strip away one of the electrons. Do you think that the questions on the test are going to be ones where even if it's a multiple proton atom, it'll, it'll be... Yeah, I think that's what they Absolutely. Okay. Because you just, um, these simple formulas just don't work when there's multiple okay. electrons. In fact, there are no simple formulas for that. So the only thing you're going to deal with in, in this course for okay. this type of problem is one electron atoms, but that does not mean that it has to be just one proton. It could be many protons where a lot of the electrons have been stripped away. Okay. Um, so it's very important. It is very important to check to see the number of protons. Um, there okay. were certain okay. examples like that in the, the sample exam. Okay. Okay. Um, so why don't we actually just work this out mathematically? Do you have your calculators with you? Yeah. What's R? R. Are we, we're going to use, use the frequency value of R? I guess that would be, um, that would be a shortcut, yeah. See, he, I think he used the energy one, and then he went, and then he used um, E equals H nu. I actually prefer that. So, okay, if that's what your instructor did, let's do that, because I think you get more intuition from that. Okay. Okay, so let's, um, let's actually just figure out the energy here. So um, looking at the Rydberg, uh, so what should I plug in then for R infinity? 2.18 times 10 to the negative 18. And that's in joules. And then our n final here would be 2. And our n initial would be. Should we make four. the r squared or no? I mean, negative. I mean, should we make the r negative? Yeah, we'll go ahead and do that. So. And then uh, z here would be 2 squared. So let's see if we get the same thing.
one point six four times ten to the negative eighteen. Yeah. Well, wait. Is it is it a negative? Yeah, but then you just like take off the bottom. So this does come out to be negative. One point six times ten to the negative eighteen joules. It makes sense that it's negative because we're losing energy. As we go from here to here, we're losing energy. 